I just have to keep telling him that it's not gay if it's me sucking your dick. That's what I hear. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, no, that makes perfectly logical sense to me. Oh, hey, everybody. I didn't notice you there. We were having a friendly discussion about dick sucking. and They were. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, this is Murder Hobo Incorporated. In, uh, between the words. <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. My mother-in-law and my wife decided to upset our child, and so I had to calm down a sad, crying nine-year-old. If you're if you're going to say it, Kyle, do it properly. It's my wife. My wife. <laughs> my wife. <coughs> All right, but we are here tonight with a very special episode. Actually, Carol herself is probably the most excited about this. She gets 15 minutes without being talked over. It's amazing. <laughs> but we will get to that later. Uh, let's go ahead and go around with introductions. I am Kyle, obviously not Frank, because I'm better looking, dressed warmly, and freezing cold nonetheless. Uh, to my left, despite the fact that that might not actually be the orientation, we have Scott. Hi, I'm Scott. Uh, on Twitter, I go by... DM Puba, um, and I'm looking forward to tonight. This should be uh, real interesting. We've thought about this, um, doing something like this for a while, and uh, I'm excited to see it come to uh, fruition. All right. Then we have Carol below him. Carol? Carol, uh, pick up whenever uh, you're ready. What? Whatever. So, Good. <laughs> Sorry, talk over me in case you haven't been part of this um that is a running joke uh hi my name is carol i'm a miniature painter also a longtime D, D player pathfinder player and occasional gm and yeah i am actually excited about this but not for those reasons i really do like to build uh scenarios so it's fun especially with such a cool map i mean that made it easy so I'm excited about Carol, this. Carol, don't ruin it. We'll get to that map later. Don't worry. Oh, That's no, you, you, guys, you guys should really see this. Like, you're totally missing out, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, to the right, we have Butt Pumpkin. Now, Butt Pumpkin, do you drill the hole before you stick it in the oven and fuck it or afterwards? During. During. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> and that's all I have to say about pretty much everything. Pretty much makes it all up on its own. All right. Well, uh, 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 we have to, unfortunately, delay the awesomeness, and we have to talk about last Saturday's uh, one shot starring myself with supporting cast members, Carol and Frank, <laughs> and one brand spanking new player uh, hey. who ruined the murder of Hobo vibe completely. He was awesome. He, he wore the shit out of that moniker by the end, though. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 am, I am. I'm one of you guys now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carol. Why don't you go ahead and uh, mention what happened? All right. Well, first of all, I'm going to mention this. Of course, is for mature audiences only. So, fuck. That. Hide your kids, and well, don't necessarily hide your wife, but hide your kids. Uh, what happened? Oh, God, what happened? So, so we basically were the remnants of an adventuring party that had gotten uh, smushed, I believe, by some sort of a snake monster. But who cares? We never even saw that monster, thank God. So we were stuck down in a cave. Uh, I believe there was, you know, we were trapped down there. <clears throat> Our artificer, played by Kyle, decided to uh, blow up all the rocks repeatedly, uh, which didn't necessarily go well for me. Because hey, I kept hey, we got out of there. Rise, uh, I kept getting hit by the pieces. Yeah. Oh, okay, and, well, and, 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 and if I'm not mistaken, you did start at, at a... At, yeah, at that's, a, uh, that's what I was going to say. So we all, so what I don't think anyone knew before is we all had to roll a D12 and subtract that from our total hit points. So, and naturally I rolled a 12 and I only start with 20, 
we were playing fourth level and I'm playing a rogue. And I mean, maybe there's different rules in this. I go by the D&D Beyond rules for hit points. So I might have jipped myself. What Carol learned was that the player should ask the DM if they have any special rules they like to yeah, yeah, guidelines, yeah, yeah. really. So on house yeah. rules. I mean, about the guidelines. I mean, I've been trying. I've been picking up a lot on the on the homebrew rules of, of you know Murder Hobo Inc. As, as I've been watching and and playing. I mean, there's there's definitely a he's got some very interesting rules, like the D12s and yeah, yeah they are. He just wrote quality ham, homebrew rules, and I agree. I actually quality like ham bone rules. So we did get know. out of that case. We did get out of the uh, the whole thanks to the artificer. Um, almost killing me. Ha -ha. Uh, and then we proceeded our way down the road and we, re let's see, what the heck did we ran into an Eden, which we took down really fast. And we ran wow. into some goblins, which thanks to our hunter, or ranger rather, uh, casting fog cloud, they decided they didn't want to fight blind and went away. And we continued on and, and Basically, it just we led to this place, which thank God was not a necropolis, but it was like the ruins of a city with a huge obelisk in the was it obelisk in the middle. Whatever it had, and it had a bunch of really large gemstones, which we um, Frank decided. Frank loves obelisks. You should know this. He loves obelisks. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? Because I, I, I to uh, man's. Uh, that was an obelisk that he was controlling people with, by the way. Right. But, but basically, um, I made a check on the big, the nifty gemstones before we started prying it out to see if I, you know, if my thieving senses went off and nothing went off. So we all pried out one because at the time it made sense. We all didn't need to help each other. It wasn't difficult. And we these three elementals and ended it right there because that probably would end up in the TPK but we decided to leave it the ending uh, unknown. So that's a Cliff Notes version. Uh, if you haven't watched it, watched it. It was a really interesting game. Uh, I thought Ashton, who was our new player, he did he did a fantastic job, uh, considering he has never played D&D &D before. Um, and that one thing I was saying off, off camera uh, before we came on was, New players bring new ideas. Um, they aren't. They don't have all the things ingrained uh, in their heads that we older players have, and it's really, really, really interesting uh, to play with them. I think it makes the game better. So agreed. And at that, we'll go ahead and call out, guys. It's been the four of us every single Tuesday. Please join Murder Hobo so it could be someone else. Yeah, that just cool. talks and talks. I, I, I love to hard hey. to talk <laughs> over. <laughs> now, I personally love the sound of my own voice. <clears throat> it's a nice, resounding baritone. It's easy to listen to. It's comforting. I've heard it soothing several times. Uh, but yes, I want to uh, second uh, Kyle's um, admonition to the rest of you out there to please try to join us and to. Uh, join in this wonderful little thing we do on Tuesdays. It's not playing, but sometimes it's even better because we get to talk shit about one another, and that's so much fun. Hey, six kids, are you not allowed to know them? You're at home? Join us <laughs> on here. <laughs> it, it's, it is a lot of fun to do this. I'm not on every week. I'm only on every other week because I'm playing on the weeks that I'm not on. So, <laughs> like the All Saturday right. game. Well, Blake, as the uh, shotgun seat for our new player and as the uh, only viewer that night because someone else couldn't be bothered to take the time, I'm not going to name <laughs> names here. Scott, I, I, whether... Admittedly, admittedly I'm not going to do it. I fell asleep right before the obelisk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Ashton did a great job in actually knowing what he was supposed to do with that 17 damage. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, Yo, Blake, is there anything? I'm dead serious. Did you did you guys turn on each other? Oh no! no. Oh oh! No, we didn't. No, he no, didn't. We did not. To do. 
<laughs> no, we basically set off the deadly, the three deadly encounters, aka the three elementals, and that was it. There wasn't any time to turn on each other at the end. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Man, All right. that's good. Well, Scott is but, getting bored. Or, sorry, go ahead, Blake. Uh, but no, yeah, if you were looking for a little input, no. Uh, he by the end of it, he was just he was scared out of his mind going into it. He was nervous as all hell because he didn't want to. He didn't. He was. He, he doesn't like to look silly or think people to think he's like stupid or anything like that. And I'm like, these people aren't going to judge you. Like, just go in, have a good time, relax, and just. The hardest part for me was trying to not stifle his creativity because I, I'm like I'm sitting over here on the couch being an asshole, and I'm like, you know what? Give it a shot. But I'm like. I'm like, because he would be asking me stuff, and I'm like, I, I don't know. Ask, at the, quit asking me stuff. Ask Frank. It's his game. Like, because I don't want to. I don't want to be telling you what's right and wrong, except for when something, like, no, you're, you're missing a big, big, big thing that you're just not observing. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It, but and yeah, by the end of it, he was. So, he, I'm like, you literally go watch the last like three minutes of him just like gushing. Yeah. It's always good. That's always good. Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to bring him around on Sunday or not. He seemed like he had such a good time. Well, yeah, he, he ended up having to go home because yeah. he, he had a, he had a, he actually had something with his grandparents on on Sunday, but and then and then we canceled Sunday, but that's another story. Yeah, that's another story. No one cares about the story, and if you really do, really, you can just go back on Twitch and watch it or even YouTube, which is for the old people who don't know the cool new Twitch itch. Or, or I would also advise, the story must be told on the last podcast network. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Now for the fun part of the night. Uh, December is a very special month here. Um, we have decided here at Murder Hobo, uh, thanks to uh, both myself and Frank, that we are going to do this a specific way. And we are going to create a bunch of one shots in the name of given. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Little baby Jesus. Testify. Testify. <laughs> and so, our first uh, uh, group of one shots tonight uh, sometimes we'll do multiple one shots, sometimes we'll only do one based on a certain theme to kind of help promote uh, creativity and kind of give you guys an idea of how to do it. Plus, uh, eventually you will see these one-shots somewhere and you can try running them yourself. I suggest doing either Blake or Carol because their map is very well written. Um, Scott's is going to be great, I'm sure, but <laughs> you might not be able to understand it. <laughs> That's probably well, true. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 and just as a side note, we want to give a quick shout out uh, to the to the creator of the map. Um, I think it's uh, Dyson uh, and all of his Patreon supporters. Um, at Dyson it, Logos. Uh, okay, at, at Dyson Logos. Thank you. I didn't know exactly. That. That's right. Now I see that. Uh, it was a great map, inspired us all. And um, it. I'll go into detail about exactly how this map inspired me because as i mentioned earlier i love the sound of my own voice hold on yeah yeah we'll definitely go over that on your turn that's why you're yes not. yes damn it hurry up <laughs> but, but first for those of you that want to go ahead and see the unedited version uh we're going to be putting these up here on the screen but uh you can also find these on his site www.dysonlogos.com yes um and so this week we did, we got a map a week ago. We had to decide looking at the map to create something out of it. And these are the one shots that we have. And I'm going to roll a dice. Ready? Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, Carol, you can go first. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going first, right? You okay. are going first. The map is going to show up shortly. Carol, you're going to tell us, you know, the background. You're going to look at your map, see what inspired you. Maybe if you put and some I, changes into the map and kind of more notes. Work for us. I have notes. Um, oh no! So yeah. when I looked, sorry, when I looked at this map, I saw all the waterfalls and pools and things, and I, 
I started with that and um, I've gone, what kind of a place? And it's underground. It looks like to me because there is an entrance that looks and it looks like it's going in. And so it looks like a subterranean type, you know, underground uh, series of interesting caverns with waterfalls and fungus and things, all this living stuff. I'm like, you know what might be fun? Why don't I make it the crypt of a druid, a long dead druid? And what the PCs have to do, um, so I actually have my own setting I've been working on where there's a series of cursed weapons that um, basically they were all just powerful magical weapons, but then something really, really bad happened to their owners. Uh, like I, I have one where they became a mummy. There's something really bad and magical happened. And the magic of the weapons that they, were ha they had with them at the time got twisted. So in my world, Taryn, you know, the character I do play in the campaign now and then, uh, <clears throat> she basically is hunting these weapons to purify them and restore them back to the way they were. Uh, so she has sent the PCs into this cavern um, to find, and what's there is uh, a staff. Uh, it's in three parts, uh, because I looked around, I'm like, all right, there's, I, there's definitely some really nice caverns where I can put some really good fights in there. Um, so I was like, I'll break the staff up in parts. That's, that's been done before, so I'm like, that'll work, and I'll, I'll scatter them around, and the PCs have to find them. Uh, so let me see, check out my notes here. So, oh, uh, levels, um, I think it's pretty high level one. I have it listed as, as levels uh, eight to 10, four to six players, like a standard composition, um, you know, like with a cleric, uh, you want to bring a rogue. So if I was doing pre-gens, it'd be a cleric, rogue, sometime tanky uh, character, um, or a frontliner, uh, let's see. And a druid or a mage. A druid would be kind of cool because I'm because it's a druid's tomb, so there may be stuff in there they can use. Uh, so that's the basic rundown of of you know what it is. I have actually more details than that. Like the the cool thing is the staff actually has a sickle on top of it, and uh, because it's actually uh, the series of weapons are called cursed blades. So I was like, I gotta put a blade on it somehow. So all right. So as for the map. All right, so I start, of course, the entrance. Uh, I have the entrance where number one is, I assume that the map is up, uh, which is the set of stairs leading from why Deem is the entrance. I didn't see anything else that really looked like an entrance. So basically, it's just stairs going down, a path flanked on both sides with lots and lots of lush greenery. And in each of those little cubby holes, there's the remnants of some sort of a rare plant. However, they have all died, which is going to be a little weird because obviously life can be supported here. So, but just meant to be kind of an ominous portent. Um, so then they get down to, uh, I'm looking at my phone here. It's a little small. All right, area number two, which is the big, which is the big chamber with the pool in there. So I'm like, well, let's see. Naturally, I love all the pools because you can hide things in them. So um, thinking druid life, you know, beasts and monsters. Uh, I decided to throw a giant crocodile in there with a couple of assassin vines to be, make it a little more difficult. Because that's a CR5 and a couple CR3s. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I would probably play with it, to, you know, and it also depends on how many people in the party um, I like to keep that as an option because, you know, if, if you're running at a con, you never know what you're really going to get either for how many people. So you do have to be flexible. So I, you know, I, that's, that to me, that's an important thing. Be flexible. Don't be afraid to, you know, pull things out and on the fly if you feel like maybe it's too difficult. Um, but that's my plan for there. Then if you look down to where I have three, there's this, I have a little S by the door, I would make that a secret door. Um, and that would lead to room with a chest inside, which is the little black mark I put at the back of the room. And inside of that, the, the chest, of course, is trapped uh, with a poison needle and locked. So bring a rope. Otherwise, you can get through it, but someone could get jabbed. <laughs> 
And inside of that would be the first piece of the staff and some additional treasure that I would come up with uh, uh, if I write this further. Then uh, the next area of four, which is where the fungus, uh, the little fungus thing is in the archway in that other room. So that I thought was really interesting because you get all these runes and stuff that are right on the walls. And I'm like, okay, I want to do something with that. So the walls there basically are going to hide a secret password that the PCs will, well, it'll make their life easier. It's not, nothing I think should be mandatory because you said, once again, you don't know what you're going to get. So you got to be flexible. Um, people may not have comprehend languages in their spell rosters or no Elvish. So, you know, I, I will obviously allow PCs to try other means to get through the doors, but it may be more interesting and a bit more hazardous. But I figured, yeah, put a code that the PCs will have to crack and they will get a secret password out of it. However, also in the area, because I saw the mushrooms, there'll be a couple of uh, violet, how those called? Oh, violet fungi, and then in that area beyond to make it a real fight, because this looked like a great area for a real fight would be a uh, huge gray ooze, which is CR8. <laughs> so um, I said, once again, after watching the first fight, I could adjust on the fly as well, but that's what I propose at the moment. Um, and since things are, you, can, you know, there are places where people can rest and stuff too in this. Um, it's, you know, it's a cavern and things are kind of, there's a lot of doors, so things aren't necessarily gonna be heard from one area to the other. Um, let's see, da -da, da -da, what else? Okay, so then five. So if you notice, I get a big red area on the stairs going up with a T. So let's just say Indiana Jones, you know, love the movie, love Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's going to be a pressure plate. If you do not, you know, your rogue or whoever doesn't notice it and disable it, you're going to step on it and a giant rolling rock's going to come down the stairs. And you'll have to make dexterity saves for half damage, uh, or hopefully disable the trap. Uh, then, let's see, then there's the upper room. So there's number six, which is just going to be a room. <clears throat> so that door will be open to area six. However, the door to area seven will need the password to get through. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll cover six. So inside of six, uh, it's a room, it's got lots of, once again, more vegetation, more growing things. Um, however, there's also five skeletons in there. And after the PCs dispatch them, they're going to find a bunch of like remnants of an adventuring party because that was an adventuring party that t ended up getting killed there. And the curse of this place brought them all back as skeletons. Uh, so then we get to room seven. Um, so. Basically, you need the password. The password will work on either of the doors that lead in there. And once you disable one, you're going to disable them both. It's just, I said they're, they're linked. It's magic. Uh, they're linked. However, if you don't have the password, you can have a rogue try to pick the lock uh, and disable the trap. It'll be a, ma it'll be a magic rune uh, that will basically uh, cast a lightning bolt. Uh, if you do not get that. What's that? I heard something. All right. Um, so basically, I said, once you disable one door, you'll disable the other. I'm not too worried about it. Otherwise, a GM could actually, you could have them use it on both. Uh, but once you get in there, more of the greenery. Um, and there is a crypt in the middle of the room or towards the back of the room. And there, I have four little green spots. Well, those are awakened shrubbery, so those aren't too bad. But they're going to look like shrubbery to the PCs. In the middle is the crypt. The PC once the PCs get within five feet of that crypt, the encounter goes off, and basically the druid arises out of the uh, crypt as a what was it? Uh, sorry, hold on. Go out in the stair. Uh, for awakened, so the awakened shrubs will awaken and proceed to try to beat on the PCs. Those are easy to dispatch, but he's not going to be so easy. He's a oh, he's a wraith, and I might tinker with him to give him some druid spells to make him a bit beefier. 
So, um, because rates are only like CR fives and I'm like, this, he needs to be a bit more epic than that. So then they'll find the second piece in the, in the crypt once they dispatch him. And that, that just leaves roommate and roommate was actually the inspiration for, was the first monster I thought of. Cause I saw the big puddle and all I could think of was the thing guarding the last piece, which is the head of the staff is a frog hemoth. <laughs> so, um, but he can't really get out of that room to run in and screw things up. He's a little big to get through a five foot, assuming those are five foot. <laughs> so that is pretty much something. And, and the third piece would be where the little X is on the map in the upper right hand corner. You'd actually have to have somebody swim down hardy har because everybody always you know is really good at swimming with heavy armor and such uh i'm like looking at the notes that people keep popping up on my writing keep popping up on my thing Jesus. Oh. guys are distracted i think you pretty so, much got um, there, carol what's that i said i think you pretty much got it there carol and i'm gonna tell you much, that is, that's my dungeon and did oh, i great. Thing. Just out of curiosity, now are your adventures going in with anything special? Well, the tenth level, so yeah, I'd make sure that they had some, you know, uh, at least a magic weapon and magic armor. Okay, nothing specific. Maybe right? a couple fun things. Uh, there would also be said I would have some. Uh, I didn't mention all the treasures. There would be treasure in the 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 chest. The chest, the secret I'd door, right? Gold, and I would also put probably to like druid scrolls or potions or whatever. Uh, and you know, I might randomly throw, I didn't think too much about treasure. I was just trying to get through the encounters, sure. but yeah, I throw some, probably some more treasure and things depending on, and, and I'm also not afraid since this is mine. I wouldn't be afraid to say, change things up, add things in. If I feel like they need help, uh, to get through it, it's, if I made it too tough. But All right, it, well, you heard it here, <laughs> folks. Uh, if you get the Druid's tomb one shot completely walk all over it just like we do carol every single day and change it however you like now um i, I will say a uh, funny thing with the glyphs i had a similar idea myself i know frank had no frank overlooked it but i i pointed him in that direction so i'm curious how uh the other two end up using those glyphs if they do at all yeah, uh, but Scott, why don't you go ahead and uh, ask a question, and then we will have Blake ask a question. Okay, I just have I just have one quick question. Um, the uh, initial part for the for the giant alligator, um, I understand that the uh, that the need is to have some type of encounter uh, that doesn't belie or doesn't lead on too much. You know, doesn't solve the whole dungeon okay. right off the bat. You know, and, and, and I get that yet while it's also challenging. Um, is there any uh, option what you're thinking about maybe making it a couple of giant alligators or maybe uh, or a couple of giant crocodiles or something? Um, it, if you wanted to scale uh, uh, difficulty up a little bit, um, would you would you be open to maybe doing a different type of still non, you know, non give away the whole dungeon type of thing. But I am wondering if that's a little bit underpowered. Uh, I don't well to a CR five and two CR threes because I have two assassin vines in there. Too. Oh, okay. You have two, uh, okay. You have two assassin so, a CR five is a giant crocodile. Okay. I didn't know that. I thought that was like a CR two yeah. or CR three creature. Okay. My bad. My bad. No, no, it's okay. And by the way, I actually did think of two. I actually thought of two crocodiles in there and I'm like two crocodiles, two assassin vines. That might be getting that might be getting a little much uh, considering yeah, no, I don't you're right. like a speed bump. The other thing too is you know a lot of times, and I think it's a smart decision when you're building an encounter like this. You want to start. We basically you want to have a bunch of speed bumps that are going to take some resources, but you obviously don't want to take them all as you build up to the final fight, which you want to have. You want the PCs to be a little bit you know, powered down from where they were when they walked in, right. but you don't want them to be totally, you know, wrecked. So right. I, that's okay. why I, I thought about putting two frogs in with the two assassin vines, but I'm like, I don't know. Maybe I a bit much. Okay. 
I would still yeah, consider again, guys. You can look at this one it. shot and walk all over it and talk all over it, just like we do, Carol. You want two <laughs> crocodiles? Throw it in there. Put one with a little alarm clock in his mouth and a little guy with the hook being like, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> all right, Blake. You got a question about this one shot that you need clarified? Uh, not actually so much anything that I need clarified. I, I, I. I probably went a little too much into detail, like with my skill checks and stuff, like as far as non-combat things went, because I, and I kind of mostly glossed over those, it seems like. Um, yeah, I actually do probably have more in my notes, but I was not in the best place to read, so. Well, we appreciate you <laughs> cutting it a little bit short and just going through a the encounters. Nice, short, concise uh, uh, run through of your one shot. But, but, but I'm actually, do you worry about true. hiding things behind a secret door? If the idea is to grab a staff, what if none of them get their skill check to get behind the secret door? If the whole idea. We'll figure is that out. Out. I'll let you figure that out later. Blake, you <laughs> asked your question or no? I'm sorry. No, I was actually, I was actually, I would like to have you elaborate a little bit more on uh, what, which one did you mean? I think seven, the, the, the looks like a highlight court. Whoa, wait, what? Sorry, what? Uh, your area seven. I, I, I thought that that was something that I, I would actually. Was the four away oh, the, from the, the and crypt? the crypt. That's the actual crypt with the bushes. Oh, okay. Those are the bushes. Okay. Yeah, those are the, I wanted a lot. It was like, all right, I want the bush. I actually want to have the bushes place. Like some of the things, I don't care where you put them as a GM, but I do want the bushes kind of put around the, yeah. Uh, you know, so, you know, artistic. <laughs> Plus also to have them in those positions, you know, if the PCs all approach and they're all around the crypt that they can just each take them. So. Okay. It just, I, I Somebody they said so they won't trigger. It won't trigger until the encounter triggers. You, you, so you, some. I, so I want them so that they can hit something. I guarantee they're going to hit something that triggers the encounter. And so I, the trigger is going to be. I think I have the answer for you two in mind. As oh, for the right. secret door, I'll figure that out. <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of segues, Blake. You're up next with yours. Now, uh, when you first saw your map, while we wait for the map to get put up, yes, just looking at it, what inspired you? The on then the first thing that I focused on, and yes. I, I I I noticed those three little alcoves uh, situated there in the stairway. Uh, I those popped out to me for some reason, and I I thought that that was a very interesting place to kind of do something that you don't see too often. Sure. Um, and in case you couldn't tell by the fact that I labeled something zero. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. I had, to, I had to go back and try and come up with a reason for that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and start uh, just with, with my uh, setup for this is that I would have uh, three eighth level PCs is what this would be intended for. Um, <laughs> Uh, on the on the on the on on the tankier side, um, but what I would do is I would ask for their characters. I don't think that this would require pre-gens or anything like that. It's it's still flexible enough regardless of what you do, um, and I would tell them to give me enough backstory about their character uh, to have something that I can use as a hook. But I would explain to them that they are on their way to a regal gala. Uh, and I would be curious to understand why they are headed there. And that would just, that would basically be my little blurb. And yeah, this, this is where it gets weird. So in, a, in I call this one Through the Looking Ass. Um, <laughs> through the Looking Ass? Wow. Yes. Well, to be fair, yeah, it's kind of like an anus deep inside, and it just stares back at you. I, I can see that. Oh, yes, because because zero actually enlarges, enlarges and shrinks in size depending on who's by it, so it's just winking at you. Um, but but they, you do you do you explain to your characters that they arrive at this at at, at the local royal place, um, and uh, they're welcomed by I don't know Lumiere or some shit. Um, and as they are 
passing by. They seem to just become almost mesmerized by this. And a very, 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 I, I wrote down here, uh, 22 or higher perception check will reveal like a very faint shimmer to this. Uh, looking ass. Uh, uh, yes, the looking ass. Uh, and uh, if the PC is successful and reluctant, uh, cue the train, woo woo. Uh, if the PC fails and is still somehow reluctant to continue, uh, cue the faint cries of help or lust or whatever, meaning cue the train, woo woo. Uh, <laughs> uh, once they get through there, it becomes impassable. It's a one way mirror. Uh, they can only see out of it, uh, but they can see everything going on in the foyer and all that kind of stuff. But, and let them stay there as long as they want. They, they're not going to be able to do anything to it. Woo woo. Um, so when they finally decide to turn around, they're going to notice these alcoves. And I don't know why the fuck the first thing I thought about this was, well, hang on, I'll go back. The reason why I kind of thought that this might be somewhere inside or somewhere of a nicer quality is because I, I noticed the detail of the brickwork around that arch. That, that made me think that this isn't necessarily somewhere that's just outside in the middle of nowhere, that this is maybe somewhere where people go or somewhere where there's other decorations around. Hmm. Uh, so I, yeah, that that was, is good. I was going to say you and I had the same idea and then it looks like the old people had the same idea of it's a tomb well, yeah see that's why I thought to I didn't like, argue like, Carol nature but it's also built so I'm like tomb no no I'm, I'm not at all saying that there's a right or wrong answer to that. no I understand why, you, why someone could take that there and I, I, that's why we're doing this is to see how per different perspectives and all of that so oh, I like that though. Go ahead. Yeah. Stop talking, everybody. Let Blake go. <laughs> but but those three alcoves, I don't know why they did. They reminded me of let's make a deal. And I'm not talking about the new Wayne Brady one. I'm talking Monty Hall. So I wanted to yep. play, I wanted to play let's make him squeal. Um, <laughs> so uh, as they're and they're as they're going down this this staircase. Uh, when they get about to 1B, what I have marked, like don't even necessarily begin describing 1A when they're there. Uh, uh, they're going to trigger a trap. Uh, if they check for traps and they find one, okay, it, it, it deactivates poison darts that weren't actually there. Woo woo. Um, they will do something that will, that will give you an excuse to uh, bring attention to these areas. Uh, and what they're going to hear is essentially an echoing of knocking and banging uh, and see which one they approach. Uh, one that they don't approach opens. And I have encounters here listed. Uh, so the encounter in one, one C, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you this, one C is a very rare magic item from a roll table. Uh, Reroll it if it's too, uh, situational but only reroll it once if, it's, if it still sucks after the second one now that's what they're getting but uh door 1a has a i believe i had a blue slot mm. <laughs> yes just one i, I wasn't going to be too out too out of uh too out of line but just just one uh sure. something that uh uh you know slows them down a bit uh then describe whether or not the door that they're at is knocking or not. Uh, give give them the opportunity to not go in, not go through that one. Um, uh, basically, yeah, literally. If you ever seen the show, let's make a deal. For this. Let's make a deal. Uh, the other door, one B, has a. Oh, what the hell did I put there? Uh, oh, a hydra. A what? A hydra. That'll be interesting because Who it's sucks? these little five foot things and they're going to be fighting either a slod or a hydra. Or or, 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 the, or, the, or, the, or they could win. They could win. They could win, oh right. No, no. Because after they've chosen, after two doors have been effectively opened, this, the second door they have to actually choose which one to open. The first one opens automatically. Uh, after the second one is, there's a cave-in so that they can't retreat. Choo, choo. Uh, <laughs> Forcing, forcing them down into the main chamber, which I'm going to refer to as four. Um, 
but I'm going to skip over four for the time being. Uh, the, the second encounter or aspect of this, which I'm calling mushroom, mushroom man, is uh, 2A, 2B, 2C, 2D. Uh, again, when I was looking at this, I noticed that those two indentations seemed intentional where I, where I have 2A drawn. That, yep. That's, I, you know, I kind of picked it again, Indiana Jones style. Yeah. I wasn't sure exactly what belonged there, but I saw the mushrooms in 2B and I'm like, yeah, maybe it can be a phallic symbol. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so effectively, what 2A is, is a uh, couple of depressions. The whole floor here that's not water is tightly packed dirt. Uh, there are two items hidden, uh, one hidden one hidden at 2B, one hidden at 2C, uh, and retrieving both of them and putting them correctly in the depression. I, like I said, I, I didn't decide what the items were, but putting them correctly there uh, would open up a Jesus left the cave type stone that was blocking 2E. Uh, 2D holds a clue as to where one of these two items is, but it has, but it's uh, uh, it requires some perception or nature checks or something like that. But I'll get back to that. Uh, so two B is another encounter, and it is a corpse flower. Mm. My mushroom is a corpse flower because I thought I looked at this tall at the tall one that looked kind of like a dick, and I thought of that that, cor that literally the actual corpse flower, the the thing that blooms like once every ten years and smells like right. that. Right. Right. That was that was kind of what I thought. I'm like, well, why couldn't you make your corpse flower one of those? So uh, there is loot, uh, depending on how many of the corpses of the flower are actually consumed by the flower. Uh, there's also a chance for a healing potion, an uncommon magic item, and uh, on a 19 or 20, uh, an actual rare magic item. Uh, a roll of 20 also locates uh, item 2B. Um, uh, the glyphs on 2D uh, require a very, very low uh, perception check, like six or seven. And this is green, pulsing, sickly moss that, like, when you're approaching it, it kind of backlights this corpse flower in this, in this just tableau of nasty. Um, I said, you know, oh, what, what is this? Is it infection? Is it babies? Is it just ugly? Roll for it. Who knows? Uh, uh, an arcana or a nature check will discern a message spelled out by the groves, and it'll give you advantage if you know under common or primordial. Uh, if during the fight with 2B you found the item, the message is just beware of the plant. If uh, you didn't find the item and uh, you roll an insight check of like eight or higher to discern what it means, oh, now you found, now you find I found the item. Uh, if you've rolled lower than that, you still get one chance and you have to make a deck save and if you get a 20, you trip over the item. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, that's pretty much out of the picture, which isn't a huge point here, but it's just one of those things that I want to make sure everyone gets enough chance to fuck it up. Uh, item 2C is, an, is underwater. I chose that this river is about 20 foot deep. Uh, and it runs through here, and it is unguarded. Uh, it is the twin of 2B. If you found item, if you found item 2B, or if you found item 2C first, if you were able to make a low-level perception check of maybe 12 or higher uh, when you were going across that uh, that uh, that uh, to cross that stone bridge there, where I have four highlighted in yellow. Uh, you would be able to see that that's where that goes. Uh, if you've already gotten 2B, you would be drawn to that area because these two items want to be together because, I don't know, magic or some shit. Um, there is a glamour around item 2C, though, that makes it seem like it's only like within arm's reach, but it's actually two minutes of air away because this is all essentially underwater. So you would have to, if you don't have a swim speed, you'd better have more than worth of air in your constitution. Uh, 
but then yeah if you go and put them back in 2a because if you have both of them you're compelled to because again magic or some shit uh one rolls away uh chamber 2e is made entirely out of jade uh there's jade floor jade walls jade sconces they magically light up when the stone goes away to draw your attention to them there's a chest in there the chest is the size of a pony keg it's made out of jade it's worth 100 gold on its own or 150 gold on its own but if you carry it you are at disadvantage on all dex related skills or saves uh, it's not trapped and it contains a tome of understanding or leadership or whatever that uh, at least one PC can use. It's not going to be something useless for me to determine it. I don't fucking care. Uh, item number three in orange I have listed as an awfully convenient resting place, wouldn't you say? Sure. It's a defensible natural recess, uh, impenetrable rock walls. Uh, this is meant to be a safe haven for the characters uh, if they go and they produce any any sort of light in here that's larger than a medium campfire uh, they will have advantage on a perception check to observe 2d8 plus two mineable precious gems in the wall that they'll have to nice that they're, able, that they're able to extract with a successful strength save uh, otherwise they turn it into dust or they crack it uh, the, the two items in four, though, those two uh, terrain difficulties I have listed as slippery when wet, uh, going up and down, going up or down the rock face or across the slick, mossy stone in the stream will require a 13 deck save uh, or else you fall slash get wet. Uh, the walls two checks, the stream's one. And I think I said, oh, yeah, and toss quippers in the river so it feels like there's a cost failing or no, fuck it. Uh, uh, elect, uh, lightning, lightning eels. <laughs> lightning eels. Uh, no, item, number, item number five I have listed as just a water feature. Never mind, I'll ask that as my question later. It's just a water feature. Really, just a water feature. Uh huh. What do you mean, even with a net 20 perception? Fine, you get a plus one weapon. Are you happy now? How? I don't you know. The Lady of the Lake, King Arthur's your ass or some shit. I don't know. Maybe on the way there's some bats or shit. <laughs> so, yeah, on, on, a, on, a, on a net 20, a, yeah, sure, a weapon rises out of the water and you get it. I don't fucking know. Uh, nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, 6A and 6B, I had imagined that on the stone doors leading back down, that there are symbols, one, you know, I don't know, tragedy and comedy or something. Uh, 6A, you fight three doppelgangers. Uh, and 6B, there is a hero's feast. Uh, but going in one permanently seals the other. And uh, I have item seven listed as, oh, yeah, it's the Abolith, should have guessed. <laughs> so at this point- Like I was gonna compliment you on using the entire map to make something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyone who's come in contact with any kind of liquid in this, meaning area four, meaning area 2C, meaning area five, uh, should begin to show slime, signs of the slime sickness as is appropriate. Uh, if you drank anything when you were in 6B, that also counts. Uh, fight it or lose, doesn't really matter. The only exit is through the water, uh, Area 7 specifically, because everything else is caving in uh, Aladdin style. Uh, characters who manage to make it through the underwater tunnel can feel their bodies land back in the local royal place with guests passed out around them. Uh, bring back the reason why they were there, yada, yada, yada. And I have in capital letters, no implied sexual assault, uh, tentacles or no tentacles. That's just not cool, bro. Amen. All right. Very good. Yeah, that was interesting. And yeah, prop, props to you for using the entire map all the way through, even to the waterfall. We, we use every part of the buffalo. Yeah, no. And I'm... Uh, 
yeah, I can see where you were saying the uh, little pedestals in 2A might be an answer to uh, missing a skill check in uh, Carol's thing to where, you know, well, I was, I was, there I was something, sure but not the corpse flower for that encounter. Yeah, sure, sure. So funny. I was, I saw the corpse flower and I'm like, I think that worked, but it was too high a level for the other stuff I wanted in there. So, but, but, but I, I mean, as, the as same a, location too, which is really funny. Yeah. It's, but I, I, I mean, I would level it as appropriate, but it, it, there's not, there's not a deadly encounter in here. There's a, they're mostly medium and hard, but because I have that, I, I did want to, there is a safe space. They have a safe space. So if they need right. to rest, they can. What levels was this for? I remember the three characters. Three, eight. Three, eight. Three, eight. Okay. All right, Carol, that was your one question. Sucks yeah. for you. Scott, what's your one question? <laughs> uh, are the three doppelgangers a reflection of the three party members? Absolutely. Oh, yes. Very nice. Very nice. I love that. Like, uh, I, was, that I, was going to, I was going to put 6B with just like three weapons in the middle of the room. So they were either fighting themselves or they were fighting themselves. Yeah, no, that, I, I like that. Uh, you can even have the mirror that yes. uh, it came in. They turn around and that's where, they, that's where the doppelgangers magically get the image of who they're going to be. Love it. Actually, I, yeah, if, if I would have not sealed off Area Zero, I would have had them probably encounter them there to have to leave. Right, right, yeah. very nice. Yeah. I'm going to read a note. It took me 20 minutes, guys, so I was trying to make sure that I <laughs> caught everything. So. You filled out the map extremely well. Uh, guys, this was uh, for three level eights through the looking ass, uh, a.k.a. Okay, the available, Monty available, Hall dungeon. For the low, low price of, I don't know, take it, it's yours. Take, take it as yours. I'll send you the, the, the encounters. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, no one will want to buy these. Obviously, maybe you'll get them for free. Or just watch this enough and listen to Blake. He pretty much goes through the entire dungeon. Uh, but that finally leads us to the last, certainly not the best. No. Wait, no. <laughs> Scott, uh, you saw this dungeon, and while we wait for the, oh, no, the map is up. God damn it, Frank, you beat me to it. Either way, you saw the yeah. map. What was your inspiration? <clears throat> What drew you in and kind of set the whole ball rolling? Okay, so looking at this map, and again, I really just want to give a quick shout out to, you know, Dyson uh, logos, because what I look for in a map is where is how you can draw inspiration from a locale. And the things that really reached out and got me, obviously, and I think it has been spoken uh, other uh, other people, were, was the water feature. Um, and, but also I was kind of taken by how, uh, you have almost this effect, even though it's the walls, you almost see an effect of almost like steam rising from the water. Uh, and like I said, although that's, that's, that's the walls, I know, but it gives you the impression when you're looking at it visually of something rising up from the water, something steaming up from the water. So first I thought maybe this should be, you know, all sorts of different things. But then I also looked at this long entry hallway. And like Blake did, there's these three little alcoves. And, and I thought about how that could be a trap. And then I thought, wow, wouldn't it be cool if they fucked this up, that those stairs weren't stairs, but they become a chute. So if you mess it up, you slide down that entire, you know, 60 to 70 um, you know, foot, uh, I think that's about 10 feet each one down. So you're sliding 70, 80 feet down. Yeah. Then you have grease at the bottom. But then I thought, well, I, well what, you know, what's the fun about sliding into a pool of water? So I stopped making it water, inspired by the idea about something rising up. And it's not water, it's acid. It's all acid. So that gave me the entire inspiration for who the big bad is. And that it's a warlock whose patron has assigned him to poison the town's water supply by turning it in or by introducing an amount of acid into it. And so this is an outdoor adventure um, where you've been tasked by a village to find out what's wrong with the water supply. People are getting sick. They're having organ failure. Babies are dying. This was the old aqueduct and the, or the old system where they would go in and check out the uh you know check out the water and make sure it's okay for testing as you see there are areas that are built up 
and areas that are natural. Also, kind of what, what Carol was saying is that you have some natural elements in here, as well as some built up areas in here, as, as, as Blake was saying. So what I have is that a warlock has come in here. He's made this his home. His patron has said you have to poison the water supply. He's doing it by putting massive amounts of iron sulfide and other chemicals into the water supply, transforming a natural spring at the top into uh, sulfuric acid to a diluted wheat sulfuric acid. But the adventure starts by noticing that the, that the uh, outside of this, those three alcoves are traps. First trap, each one is a statue with its hand out, a male with his hand out, female with his hand out. And then the last one is an androgynous person with both male and female parts. You gotta, you gotta basically pay a fine to, to go on. If you don't pay a fine, the stairs disappear, it becomes a flat chute. You slide down into, into that chamber that I have number two. There are two acid trolls that live in that chamber. Uh, they, that, so a fight ensues from there. 2A is, uh, is that little secret room that I think, you know, I'm kind of with Carol in there. Um, not even the trolls know about it, but there's some pretty good loot. Uh, the natural edge that leads up to area three and four. I like, I just took that at face value. I just made a mic in it. Right. I just made a Mykonids that are pissed off at what's happened. They used to live here. There's no problem. There's no trouble. But with that faint amount of sulfuric acid coming through here, um, then it's poisoning them as well. Uh, with a couple of good charisma checks, they'll join you in the fight uh, to try to storm the upper reaches to where the warlock has made his home. Um, and and, uh, uh, sorry, what? real fast. Party composition. Party composition, sorry. Uh, five okay. characters, six level. Five at six level. All right. No, five at I'm six loving level. this so far. You're hitting the points, and I'm interested. Continue. I'm going to go ahead and use my interrupt there. Uh, since this is all sulfuric acid that they're ingesting, might I suggest making the uh, dead giveaway that there's something wrong with the town that everyone smells like egg farts? Yes, I, that's that's a good point. I actually have there's a strong uh, the egg farts. I have there's a strong sulfurous smell when you first come in, and all the uh, the uh, you can make a perception check or survive actually survival or investigation to see that the walls are 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 kind of this cavern is not natural stone. It's more like lead, nickel, and zinc, which are non-reactive to uh, to to our to our chemistry-minded friends. Um, you know, it, sulfuric acid doesn't interact with, with those metals. So you have a metallic mix of the stone, which resists the, uh, the, uh, you know, sulfuric acid eating this entirely away. So as, uh, if our characters are murder hobo-ish enough, then they'll kill the mic and it's quite easy. That's not very hard, but as they make their way up to area seven and eight, area seven is where our big bad is, which is a high level warlock, 14th level. Uh, with two servants, actually three servants, sorry, a hobgoblin captain who's enlisted a couple of his hobgoblin buddies to be shoving iron sulfide and other chemicals to create um, right there where the um, um, kind of, you can kind of see, I didn't highlight it on the map, but down the corridor at the top of the stairs, at the area six and seven, you make a left, you run into the river, you'll see some hobgoblins shoveling crap into the water supply there. Uh, it's natural fresh water behind it. It's corrupted water from there on out. Um, you know, that waterfall gives a good mixing and allows the elements to mix and a good strong sulfuric acid from there on out. To six is where um, the materials are stored, uh, guarded by two stone golems. Uh, and then number seven is where our big bad evil guy makes his home. And again, like I said, you're going to have a wizard. Uh, you're going to have a hobgoblin captain and an archer as servants to a good warlock of uh, either the Archfey or um, the Old One or the Fiend, probably the Old One, uh, maybe a 14th level warlock for a nice good capstone type of encounter that I have deadly at about maybe 72, 7300 uh, um, EXP for a good CR9 uh, for a party five, six level characters. So that's the adventure, and I love how, uh, how the map gives the inspiration visually and structurally how how you have elements there's so many things going on here you've got glyphs you've got natural hazards you've got uh that water could be lava it could be 
acid. It could be normal. I mean, it could be tons of stuff. This great job on the map. I love the three dimensional perspective. Uh, and I had a lot of fun. Wow. Yeah, no, I didn't even think sulfuric acid. I didn't even think lava. I didn't even think any of those things. Worst map, but most creative use of it. <laughs> I, I, I was trying to rush there, and I didn't want to make too many encounters. Uh, you know, I wanted a couple of good hard ones. Uh, the acid trolls I have at the start are going to be really freaking nasty. It's not a deadly encounter. It'll be a hard one, but they're going to need allies at the end of it, which is why I put the myconids in there that can at least serve as cannon fodder uh, or an early warning system to, 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 to their assault on the upper reaches. Man, I'm not looking at the map anymore as a KO. I just see the steam rising from it. Um, yeah. so out of curiosity, with the glyphs that you had in the background on the stairwell, is that where you kind of came up with the idea of a warlock being those? Yep. Kind of, yep. Just out of curiosity. Yep. The, right. the, the warlock, the, the, the glyphs are like he made his mark for his patron right there, right? Sure. Wow. Yeah. It's really cool. I don't even have any questions. That's just really, really cool. All right, Blake, you had an interruption. Do you have a question? <laughs> I, I, I mean, no, I, I really don't. I'm, I'm very, very good. Uh, it, it, it flows together very, very well. And I, I actually would love to go through that at some time. All right. Well, you heard it here, folks. First, folks, wow, we have for five level six players, the egg farts one shot. <laughs> <laughs> very good very good uh, if, if we if we if we get enough comments we may actually write all these up and make them available to you and by we i mean we will give our shit to frank and make him do it <laughs> that is a general idea, but yes uh so i'll write it up i'm gonna i know i would want to write up my own yeah yeah I yeah, totally. Oh, by the way, I did come up with an answer for the secret door because I know, Scott, yours was not, yours has just got a bunch of random treasure behind it. It's not integral. Yeah. To it. No. So in my case, it is kind of integral. So I was thinking, though, once you find the other two pieces, the magic from them actually will lead you to that door and you'll be able to see the door and you'll be able to get oh, through okay. it. Oh, huh. okay. Yeah. There's your answer. I was gonna, yeah, I was gonna say, well, else fails magic or some shit. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the, that's the thing is, you know, I, I don't think of all this when I'm quickly coming up with this. And I, it didn't take, or it was longer than twenty minutes, but it probably wasn't horribly much longer than twenty minutes. It's what I had time to do. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I, I know for once. I'm, I mean, I, I'll, I'll uh, go over to a, uh, you know, um, uh, Dyson's website because I. I fall into the idea whenever I write my own maps of doing everything top down view. And, and what I like about this, giving this 3d isometric type of view like this, yeah. it, 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 it allows for that visual, you know, 3d perspective of, you know, something rising. Right. And that's what gave the idea of, of either heat or an exothermic reaction or a chemical reaction. When you can do things like that, when you can see maps like that, uh, I, I think it adds a really nice level, uh, and I've never done this before, but I really, really, really like it. So, you know, props again to Mr. Dyson for uh, for uh, for such a very cool, cool map. Oh yeah, well, and, and and I, 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 you, there's a whole bunch on the on the site, guys. I really encourage you to go check them out, especially just to see. Sometimes all you need from a for a place to start from is. It just a template to go off of, but right. I really going back to that isometric, what you were saying there, Scott. When I saw this, especially the stairs, I thought of that MC Escher drawing. Yeah, yeah. Which, which made me think of labyrinth, which made me make uh, fuck it, make it as surreal as possible. No, absolutely, absolutely. It's it's the the visual picture gives give it 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 kicks off the you know creative impulse to see you know where am i going to take this and and that's and that's why i love dming so much is that you know you can see something in an, and it inspires an entire story from it it's 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 fantastic yeah and and and, and if you guys uh just want to see more of this kind of stuff and want and, and just want to encourage people that are able to to spark this kind of creativity 
Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure on his website, I think Dyson has a Patreon, and I'm sure he would greatly appreciate it if uh, you guys could help contribute to that. Absolutely. But even better, go to the Murder Hobo Inc. Patreon. <laughs> Fifty dollars a month. My email below me. Send me dick pics. <laughs> More dick pics. Fifty dollars worth of dick pics. Um, we range by size, you know. So, like a nine-inch dick is about nine dollars. Five inch is twenty. Um, it's those micro dick people. Everyone loves them. No micro transactions. Ah, yeah, one way or another. <coughs> All right, guys, we are going to cut this uh, yeah. uh, a little bit later tonight. Uh, first of all, guys, they've already done it enough, but I want to say it one more time. Thank to at Dyson Logos for the map. Uh, this has been our maps-inspired one-shots. Uh, we've got a lot of them uh, and a lot of good ideas, and uh, hopefully these will get written up and uh, you guys might be able to borrow them. I know Frank himself already has one written up that he will probably give away for free because it's Frank. You don't buy his stuff unless it's free. Um, but once more <laughs> around the room, Blake, final thoughts. No, I, I, I actually really was looking forward to this because uh, we've had this map picked out for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. Quite a, quite a while. And I had so many ideas when I thought about it and I, Honestly, I wasn't sure if we were going to do this episode when it came back. And I saw it, and I had a whole new set of ideas. And I'm like, I think every time, I think every time, if I were to come up with something like this, I could write something. Not write, right. but I could come up with a million different things to pull out of my ass. And I'm not just talking because I have a gerbil up there right now. <laughs> All right, Richard Gear, we're done with you, Carol. <laughs> final thoughts after um, Blake? You just go, go. <laughs> All of a sudden, Mr. Lemmy Winks came to mind. <laughs> oh, God. Um, no, it was that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. Uh, I really, and I think my favorite part, though, was seeing what everyone else had. Absolutely. Uh, I, just, just, I loved your ideas. Um, Blake's world's weirdest garden party. Because that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> He's out the uh, it was, I, 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 I love uh, both of your ideas. I mean, that was interesting. It was to see what direction we all went in. And boy, we were all different. Although there were some similarities too, I think, um, you know. Oh, definitely. I liked where the ruins came in. I like people's uh, uh, introduction of, you know, just how it was built. The fact that it, some of it was uh, uh, raw cave and other was manufactured steps and everything like that. I can't think of the right words for it. Uh, and just where you guys really use that. Um, good point, Carol. I'm going to talk over you. You totally did. To We're keeping over to Scott now, Carol. <laughs> Scott, final thoughts. Keep them so. Short. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I, I've been really looking forward to this because um, it, it's it's always a good uh, time to be able to. Uh, engage in the creative process and then see how other people have have taken the same idea it just it just keeps your creativity moving forward uh working with other creators uh like the like a you know dyson logos for making the map and see how people's uh creative process starts and where it leads we all know blake it leads straight to the ass um that's 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 great Sometimes it leads to. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yes, sometimes, some, sometimes, like that's right. And I, uh, I really loved uh, Carol's take on uh, on the natural versus the man-made, and then having having a druid, uh, and then the corruptive, um, you know, aspects of weapons and trying to piece together a puzzle. Um, I think the geography of the of the map lends itself to that. Uh, having different sections uh, that you know, kind of kind of means that you need to kind of solve something before you can advance the needs of passwords and things like that. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's all great. So um, I always, I always like watching other people create. Uh, it always inspires my own creativity. Yeah. All right. That's all I have. All right. Well, since we've, Went ahead and mentioned at Dyson Logos Maps multiple times at Dyson Logos Maps. 
and how the at Dyson logos maps uh, really uh, 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 helped us out here. <laughs> at Dyson logos. <laughs> That's an actual cop at Dyson logos. All right. But uh, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, this next Saturday, we are going to have the campaign. Uh, unfortunately, I'm bowing out again that time. So really, you don't need to watch it. Dewey's not. No, I am available. Yeah, we're Dewey. Hi, Jenks. Uh, Dewey in the box. Dewey and Taryn are still missing together. So <laughs> Dewey's in the box. All right. And oh. for the next Between the Rolls, that is going to be a one-shot. Uh, we are going to be doing uh, a conversion one shot. We're not going to come up with three separate ones. We're going to come up with one on the spot. So it's either going to be really good or really <laughs> terrible. Really um, <laughs> is this the round robin one that I had suggested? No, not quite. This is oh, okay. a conversion uh, and a mystery style campaign. So oh, okay. we'll clarify later on down the road. Conversion is where you take a book. Um, a comic, a movie. And an adaptation. An adaptation. I did that. Thank you. That's the correct word. And yeah. we're going to turn it into a mystery one shot. Uh, so tune in. Until then, everyone, wave at the camera. Even I know a conversion is a football term. I like football. I do too.